It's a great pleasure and honor to introduce our first uh, speaker. Uh, it's uh, Lieutenant General Erik Gustafsson, Chief of Defense Staff of Norway, speaking on Norwegian contributions to NATO's <coughs> military operations. Please, the floor is yours. <coughs> Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for inviting me to, to speak to this uh, audience and to, to the very, very important conference. Uh, as a founding uh, member of NATO, Norway has uh, been an active participant since the signing of the North Atlantic Treaty in 1949. Likewise, the armed forces have a long traditions contributing to the operations outside Norwegian territory, either as part of UN, NATO, or in an EU framework. Since the Korean War until today, Norwegian forces have been deployed to more than 100 operations and participating with more than 100,000 Norwegian soldiers. For some of you, 100,000 isn't that much, but we have a quite, quite a small armed forces in Norway, so it's, it's quite, quite a figure. Uh, the last 20 years, we have uh, had significant troops contributing to NATO, mis NATO missions in the Balkans, in Libya, and in Afghanistan. More recently, we have seen uh, a substantial strengthening of the alliances, fo alliances focus on collective defense, hence influencing Norwegian contribution, contributions to NATO operations. The strategic environment has been covered earlier in the conference, at least yesterday. So I will go directly to explain how we face these uh, challenges from the Norwegian side. I will start with underlining the Norwegian concept of credible defense. NATO membership is the foundation for the Norwegian defense. The collective military capabilities of the NATO members form the defense cornerstone in the event of aggression that may act activate Article 5 of the NATO Treaty. In order to host allied support, we need a capability to re receive reinforcement, reinforcements and transport those forces to the areas of operation. The third part of the deterrence is a credible national first line of defense that are capable of making a difference and participating in operations with allies. Intelligence and surveillance are important in order to identify as early as possible enemy buildup of <coughs> for the use of forces against Norwich, Norway or NATO. With this context in mind, I will now focus on the specific Norwegian contributions to NATO operations. I will divide our contributions into the following categories. First, I will mention something about daily operations in Norway, in, in the northern flank of NATO operations in Europe in context with the outcomes of the 2014 and 2016 summits, and, countering and ending up with countering violent extremist organizations. Norwegian, contribu Norwegian contributions to NATO military operations are daily in effect in Norway. Every day we use a diverse set of tools to conduct redundance <clears throat> redundant collection of information in our neighborhood. All services are involved in establishing our integrated common operating picture. Our forces provides situational understanding to the military commanders and political leadership, both in Norway and in NATO. The NATO Quick Reaction Alert in Bode is operational 24-7 as two F-16 fighters yet are always ready to investigate violations of our airspace in NATO, NATO's northern flank. Norwegian armed forces conduct daily operations in order to deter foreign aggression, secure territorial integrity, and to so support civilian authorities in the conduct of resource and consequence management operations. This includes border security towards Russia, patrolling, of the territorial waters and other areas under Norwegian jurisdiction. Our national joint headquarters is sharing the general operational picture with NATO and the Norwegian armed forces are part of the NATO airs and part of the NATO airs and ice on a daily business on the northern flank. Key to Norwegian serenity is our capability to demonstrate and an undivided will to defend 
our territories and our persistent cooperation and integration with allied partners. This, nation, this notion permit, permits our planning, training, operations and capability development. On that note, I would like to draw your attention to the upcoming NATO High Visibility Exercise, Trident Juncture 2018. The exercise attacks, <coughs> attracts forces from most NATO countries and also some other non-NATO countries as Sweden and Finland. We expect more than 30,000 soldiers to participate. We will train both the deployment of the very, very high joint task force and other allied forces to Norway, Norway, including elements of the US Marine Corps. Important elements of the Trident Juncture include joint combined operations uh, to, conduct, to counter hostile operations in the North Atlantic. In order to be able to support the Allies reinfor Allied reinforcement forces, Norway have to demonstrate the capacity to provide host nation support to the arriving forces. This is a real test of the Norwegian total defense concept, a concept which is essential for the defense of Norway and the North Atlantic. In response to evolving threats, NATO has implemented reinforcement, <coughs> reinforcement of collective defense demonstrated through the 2014 Wales Summit and later the 2016 Warsaw Summit. In 2014, the Alliance embraced the Readiness Action Plan. I aimed to respond to the changes in the security environment, including assurance measures and adaptation measures to strengthen collective defense. First, a look at the implica implications of the assurance measures, which were in intended, for intended for NATO members, member countries in Central and Eastern Europe to re reassure their po population reinforced and reinforce their defense and de deter potential aggression. In addition to the daily operations in Norway, we have supported the NATO assurance measures framework in a number of ways. NATO air policing is a peacetime <coughs> defense mission safeguarding the integrity of the allies, allies, alliance members' airspace. In addition to our QRA in Bodø, Norwegian fighters' jets have contributed on a regular basis abroad. In the summer, of, summer months of 2015, we had the responsibility for Baltic air policing, deploying to F-16 to cover the airspace over the Baltic states. NATO has intensified the use of maritime patrols in the Baltic Sea, the Black Sea, and the Mediterranean, utilizing the Standing Maritime Group and the Standing Maritime Countermeasure Groups. Norway is participating on a regular basis. In 2017, we deployed one frigate as the command ship for Standing NATO Maritime Group No. 1, including the commander of the entire group. Another frigate will deploy together with Standing Naval Maritime Group No. 1 in the second half of 2018. To the Standing Mine Countermeasure Group, we normally deploy one minesweeper or mine hunter for a four-month period during the first and the second half of the year, a total of eight months every year. A number of historic ordnance disposal operations are conducted throughout the deployments, both in the Norwegian area and also in the Baltics. The Readiness Action Plan from 2014 also called for adaptation measures, ch changes to the Alliance's long-term military postures and capabilities to enable it to respond more quickly to emerging em emergencies wherever they arise. A, a crucial element of the adaptation measures was the enha enhancement and transformation of the NATO response force. The NATO response force consists of a highly capable joint multinational force able to react in a very short time to the full range of security challenges. NATO allies decided to enhance, decided to enhance the NRF in 2014 by creating the spearhead force within it, known as the Very High, very high Redness Joint Task Force, or VJTF. The VJTF is uh, to move at first indication of hybrid or conventional warning signs, 
before a crisis emerges to attack as a potential counter to further aggression. NATO response forces are essential and put significant Norwegian capabilities on readiness. Next year, we will pro provide one mechanized infantry battalion, the Telemark Battalion for, for that force, one artillery bat battery, one military intelligence task group, one role two medical treatment facility, and one special operations task group to the VJTF. Furthermore, we provide several other military capabilities, capacities to the immediate follow-on forces and follow-on forces group in the, in the NATO reaction forces. As a contribution, of, as a con continuation of the 2004 Redness Action Plan, the member countries welcomed the con concept of enhanced forward presence during the Warsaw Summit in 2016. Enhanced forward presence is a key element of strengthen deterrence and defense posture in the eastern part of the alliance. Deploying the enhanced forward presence, we must be prepared to act in accordance with existing NATO response plans in, if required. The first Norwegian contribution to EFP deployed to Lithuania in late May 2017 as a part of the multinational battle group with Germany as a framework nation. In addition to Germany and Norway, the Netherlands and Belgium participated in the battle group. Our contribution was a company size combined arms team organized around Leopard 2 main, tank, main battle tanks with brigade assets integrated. Lieutenant, <coughs> Lieutenant Thomas Petersen will cover this in a more detail later. So I will not take his speech. For the first six months of 2018, we deploy an air reconnaissance task unit to the same multinational battle group based on operational requests. Future Norwegian contribution, contributions to EFP are under constant consideration based on a comprehensive approach to all NATO commitments. To a small nation like Norway, stability is an important trade, trade of a favorable international community. Consequently, it's important to support activities that foster predict predictable and transparent international relations, <coughs> while at the same time supporting initiatives that counter extremists and all, all, all white the, the root causes of conflict. In Afghanistan, Norway has been committed to NATO's stabilization effort for over 15 years. For operations, Operation Resolute Support, we provide special forces operators and staff officers to the coalition command structure. The main task for a special force element is to train, advise, and assist the crisis response unit of the Afghan Special Police in Kabul. Given the security situation, this is a demanding task, and our soldiers are men men mentoring and assisting the CRU, CRU in high-risk operations on a regular basis, as you have seen throughout the media the last couple of weeks. A key for success has been continuity and stable support to the unit over several years, developing mutual trust, skills, and experience. The crisis response unit has been praised by the Afghan president a number of times because of their quality and, and track record in high-risk operations. Additionally, the crisis response unit was also commend, commended as a blueprint for success by the commander of wrestler support on his speech to the U.S. Congress in the spring of 2017. In addition to NATO operations, Norway contributes to global fight on ISIS under the operation Inherent Resolve. We have uh, deployed both conventional and special operations forces to support operational inherent resolve. The special forces contribution has been a vital contribution to the campaign supporting training and advising security forces in Syria and in Iraq. From 2015 to 2017, a Norwegian conventional task unit conducted training of Iraqi security forces in the Kurdish area of Iraq. Last spring, this unit was redirected to Anbar province to maximize our effort in defeating ISIS in Iraq. In the fall of 2017, the Norwegian task unit conducted expeditionary advice and assist 
in support of Iraqi security forces on brigade and division level. Norwegian soldiers operated shoulder to shoulder with Iraqi co co colleagues in their fight along the Euphrat, Euphrates River valley in, to the Syrian border. The unit was one of the very few coalition units standing together with the Iraqi forces in the restoration of territorial integrity in the Anbar province. NATO and the transatlantic link is the cornerstone in the defense of Norway. As I have attempted to highlight the last minutes, this notion is demonstrated by the way our armed forces conduct operation in Norway, in Europe, and our outdoor area. Just to mention a figure, we normally use approximately one-third of our armed forces in Norway, one-third abroad, and one-third is preparing for, for one of them. In essence, Norway is an integral part of our military strategy. NATO is an integral part of our military strategy, always reflected in our, how we plan, train, and exercise and conduct operations. Prudence and transparency are important assurance measures, while interoperability with our close allies is highlighted as an important deterrent factor. Interoperability will, with allied partners will remain a focal point for the development of uh, capabilities and, and uh, competences. Consequently, the ongoing modernization of our national intelligence service and the procurement of platforms like P-8, F-35, submarines are all essential elements to meet the current and future challenges as a sovereign state and a relevant alliance partner. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for that, uh, Lieutenant General. <coughs>